In iOS 14, SwiftUI gets a powerful new modifier called Matched Geometry Effect. It lets you synchronize view animations from one view to another, almost like a magic move in Keynote. Let's see how it works. In my struct, I'll make some state, at state, private var, is flipped, is false. And in our body, I'm going to find our view state. So I'll say there's a v stack. And if is flipped is true, I want to have a circle with a fill of color.red, not a style, that's the one, color.red, and a frame width of uh, 44 and a height of 44. Then below that, some text. I'll do Taylor Swift 1989 in dot font dot headline. And then I'll say else and paste in that text below. But I'm going to invert it. So the text comes first and the circle comes second. And now if I just scroll down a little bit, I'm going to add a modifier to the V stack to do on tap gesture with animation self dot is flipped dot toggle. This is fairly old iOS 13 style code. I want you to see how it looks. If I do animation correctly, there we go. See how it looks with iOS 13 code first, and then we'll apply a matched geometry effect. So here's our title and our uh, circle. When I press on them, they'll flip like that. They'll fade out and fade in again. That's the default SwiftUI animation, and it, it kind of works. But in iOS 14, we can do better because we can actually tell iOS that this text and this text are the same, and this circle and this circle are the same and to be animated together as one. And it's done in a few steps. First, you make a namespace. At namespace, private var, animation, I'll call it. And that is just a placeholder where SwiftUI can store views in, and a global namespace to say, yeah, this one and this one, they're the same. That's all it's going to be doing. And then we're going to say for our circle, this first one, dot, match geometry effect. The ID can be anything like numbers or strings. I'm going to use shape. In a namespace, that one we made. Animation. And I'll add the same one to the other circle. So we've got the same matched geometry effect, same ID, shape and shape in the same namespace, animation both times. And for the text, I'll do another one. Match geometry effect, ID, I'll do album title also in the animation namespace. And apply that to the other text as well. So they're both marked up in exactly the same way. Let's press Command R now and see how that looks. When I press on it, they move smoothly now. It correctly animates them from A to B. It recognizes they're the same view, so it animates them correctly. It's much, much nicer. Let's try a more advanced example. Let's, uh, Get rid of some code here, start again from scratch. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the animation namespace, as that's exactly the same. The state I'll change to is zoomed equals false. Then our body here, uh, we can use a V stack with a spacer at the top to push all our stuff to the bottom. And then inside the uh, V stack, after that, I'll do another V stack and a H stack and I'll make a rounded rectangle with corner radius 10, like that, filled in with color blue, with a frame. Now for the frame here, I want this frame to change size depending on whether it's zoomed is true or false. So I'll make a computed property for that. Var frame is a CG float, and it'll return is zoomed, question mark, 300, otherwise 44. So our frame now I can say, the width is frame, the height is frame. Then we'll do padding dot top, uh, and the amount of padding I'll do if we're zoomed, I will do 20, otherwise zero. Then after the rounded rectangle, I'm gonna add some more views. And I say, if zoomed is equal to, is, is zoomed, sorry, is equal to false, then add our text Taylor Swift, 1989. And I'll attach to that the match geometry effect. Again, I'll use album title, 
in namespace animation. Animation. And give this thing a font headline again, since it's a bit bigger than a screen. And give it afterwards a small spacer so it's pushed to the side of the H stack. So that is our is zoomed. Then after the H stack down here, I'm going to add if is zoomed is true, then the same text again. So that is text Taylor Swift dash 1989, 89 even, uh, dot font dot headline and match geometry effect. ID was album title in animation. Um, I'll also add a little bit of padding so it looks nicer on the screen. Let's just do bottom. Let's do 60 points of padding there. And again, add a bit of space there below it like that. And we want to say underneath, let's get this right here because there's quite a few things now. Underneath uh, this V stack here, we're going to add an on tap gesture. This one just here. Uh, we'll do on tap gesture. And with animation, I'll do a spring this time, a slightly different style. Animation, even with an O. Uh, we'll do self.iszoomed.toggle. And I also want to say to the V stack, actually, you have some padding around you and a frame with a max width of infinity. And frame height is going to be is zoomed, then 400, otherwise 60. And background color white. 0.9. Phew! Lots of code in there. Did I get it all right? Let's find out. Slightly more advanced effect, all being well. There is our title, Taylor Swift 89. When I press on it, it'll fold out like that. So it kind of rips off the uh, Apple Music now playing area. A little fold out tray at the bottom. So what's happening here is we have a text here inside a HStack. That's what you're seeing here. HStack has a rounded direct this thing, a text next to it. But this text here is only showing when is zoomed is false. So when that becomes true, this text no longer shows. Instead, this text shows. And this is outside the H stack in the parent V stack. So it shows below the rounded rect. So basically toggling one text for another text, this one for this one. And in doing so, because they have the same match geometry effect, so if you want to animate them correctly between those two positions. We also have the frame of our rounded rec being modified. That's our little mock album title. So it's all animating very, very smoothly just through this match geometry effect modifier.